Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we will talk about the latest RCUG guideline about recurrent miscarriages, which was published in June 2023. What is the definition of recurrent miscarriages? Recurrent miscarriage has been defined as three or more first trimester miscarriages. However, clinicians are encouraged to use their clinical discretion to recommend extensive evaluation after to first trimester miscarriages if there is a suspicion that miscarriages are of pathological and not of sporadic nature women with recurrent miscarriages should be offered testing for acquired thrombophilia particularly lupus anticoagulant and anticoagulant antibodies prior to pregnancy women with second trimester miscarriage may be offered testing for factor 5 leiden prothrombin gene mutation and protein S deficiency ideally within a research context inherited thrombophilias have a weak association with recurrent miscarriages routine testing for protein C anti thrombin deficiency and methyl any tetrahydrofolate reductase mutation is not recommended Cytogenetic analysis should be offered on pregnancy tissue of third and subsequent miscarriages in any second trimester miscarriages. Parenteral peripheral blood karyotype should be offered for couples in whom testing of pregnancy tissue reports an unbalanced structural chromosomal abnormality or there is unsuccessful or no pregnancy tissue available for testing. Women with recurrent miscarriages should be offered assessment for congenital uterine anomalies ideally with a 3D ultrasound. Women with recurrent miscarriages should be offered thyroid function tests and assessment for thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Women with recurrent miscarriages should not be routinely offered immunological screenings such as HLA, cytokine and natural killer cells testing, infection screening or sperm dna testing outsider research context next comes the advice about lifestyle changes women with recurrent miscarriages should be advised to maintain a bmi between 19 to 25 kg per meter square secondly the smoking cessation thirdly they should limit alcohol consumption and limit caffeine to less than 200 mg per day for women diagnosed with antiphospholipid syndrome, aspirin and heparin should be offered from a positive test until at least 34 weeks of gestation following discussion of the potential benefits versus the risks. Aspirin or heparin should not be given to the woman with unexplained recurrent miscarriages. There is currently insufficient data to support the routine use of PTA means peri-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy for the couples with unexplained recurrent miscarriages while the treatment may carry a significant cost and potential risk. Resection of a uterine septum should be considered for a woman with recurrent first or second trimester miscarriage ideally within an appropriate audit or research context. Thyroxine supplementation is not routinely recommended for euthyroid women with thyroid peroxidase antibodies who have a history of miscarriage. Progesterone supplementation should be considered in a woman with recurrent miscarriage who present with bleeding in early pregnancy. For example, 400 mg micronized vaginal progesterone twice daily at the time of bleeding until 16 weeks of gestation is recommended to these patients. Women with unexplained recurrent miscarriage should be offered supportive care ideally in the setting of a dedicated recurrent miscarriage clinic. Now this table is from this guideline and that is the risk table epidemiological factors. The risk factors are shown and its association is shown as well. So advancing maternal age is associated with increased risk of miscarriage. Advancing paternal age is associated with increased risk of miscarriage, although not as markedly as with maternal age. Number of previous miscarriages are associated with increased risk of subsequent miscarriage. Previous live birth have no association with subsequent miscarriage risk. Black ethnic background 
has got increased risk of miscarriage. Consanguineous relationship has no increased risk of recurrent miscarriage. Smoking has got increased risk of miscarriage. Excessive alcohol consumption has got increased risk of miscarriage. Excessive caffeine consumption has got increased risk of miscarriage. Women with a BMI of less than 19 or BMI of more than 25 kg per meter square has also got an increased risk of miscarriages. And environmental chemical exposure and dietary intake about that it is written that there are limited studies examining this association and the effect of these need to be further investigated table 2 in this guideline is about antiphospholipid antibodies and it says that there is increased risk of risk recurrent miscarriages particularly with the lupus anticoagulant and anticardiolipin antibodies as far as inherited thrombophilias are concerned, there is weak association with recurrent miscarriages. The parental chromosome rearrangements have got increased risk of recurrent miscarriage. The chromosome anomaly of the pregnancy is the commonest cause of sporadic and recurrent miscarriage. Miscarriage of euplied pregnancy is associated with increased risk of subsequent miscarriage. As far as the congenital uterine anomalies are concerned, there are increased risk of miscarriage with septate and bicarbonate uterine. The association of acquired uterine anomalies with a miscarriage remain uncertain due to limitation of studies and methodological quality. The cervical insufficiency has got increased risk of second trimester miscarriage. Now let us talk about the role of endocrine factors in recurrent miscarriages. When we have well-controlled diabetes and thyroid disease, there is no increased risk of recurrent miscarriage. As far as subclinical hypothyroidism is concerned, there is increased risk of recurrent miscarriage. Thyroid autoantibodies, if they are present, there are increased risk of recurrent miscarriages. The polycystic ovarian syndromes are associated with increased risk of recurrent miscarriage. Prolactin imbalances carry increased risk of recurrent miscarriage. Luteal phase defect, about that, it's written that there is insufficient or inconclusive evidence regarding its association with recurrent miscarriages. The association of peripheral immune factors with recurrent miscarriage is insufficient or inconclusive evidence. Also, the uterine natural killer cells are not confirmed to be associated with recurrent miscarriages and we have inconclusive and insufficient evidence regarding its association with recurrent miscarriages. About the genital tract infections, we have insufficient and inconclusive evidence regarding its association with recurrent miscarriages. When researches were done on increased sperm DNA fragmentation, it was found that there was increased risk of recurrent miscarriages with this factor. Now let us talk about inherited factors like women with second trimester miscarriage may be offered testing for factor 5 laden prothrombin gene mutation and protein S deficiency ideally within a research context. They should be made aware that there is currently limited evidence that the treatment changes reproductive outcomes. About the acquired thrombophilias, the guideline says that women with recurrent miscarriages should be offered testing for acquired thrombophilia, particularly for lupus anticoagulant and anticordilipin antibodies prior to the pregnancy. About the genetic factors, the guideline says that cytogenetic analysis should be offered on pregnancy tissue of third and subsequent miscarriages and in any second trimester miscarriages. In recurrent miscarriages, Parental peripheral blood karyotype should be performed for the couples in whom testing of pregnancy tissue reports an unbalanced structural chromosomal abnormality. The finding of the subsequent abnormal parental karyotype should prompt a referral to clinical geneticist. When cytogenetic analysis is indicated but the testing of pregnancy tissues is unsuccessful or there is no pregnancy tissue available for testing, parental karyotype should be offered. Now, there is certain association of anatomical abnormalities with the recurrent miscarriages. And the guideline says that women with recurrent miscarriages should be offered assessment for congenital uterine anomalies, ideally with a 3D ultrasound. There is also role of endocrine factor. Women with recurrent miscarriages should be offered thyroid function tests, assessment and the assessment of thyroid peroxidase antibodies level. 
about immune factors it is written in the guideline that women with recurrent miscarriages should not be routinely offered immunological screening such as hla cytokine and natural killer cells tests outside of a research context about infective agents it is written in the guideline that women with recurrent miscarriages should not be routinely offered infection screening outside of research context because there is lack of consistent association be between infection testing and recurrent miscarriages now this guideline encourages certain lifestyle modification and about the healthy lifestyle modification it says that women with recurrent miscarriages should be advised to maintain the bmi between 19 kg per meter square and 25 kg per meter square smoking cessation limit alcohol consumption and limit caffeine to less than 200 mg per day observational studies showed that changes in the lifestyle is associated with improved outcome about male factors the guideline says that couple with recurrent miscarriages should not be routinely offered dna testing outside of the research context about acquired thrombophilia it is written in the guideline that aspirin and heparin or low molecular weight heparin either unfraction or low molecular weight heparin should be offered to women with APS that is 75 mg aspirin orally and 40 mg subcutaneously in oxaparin from a positive pregnancy test until at least 34 weeks of gestation. Clinicians and women should be aware that the treatment with heparin particularly unfraction heparin is not without some risks. Aspirin and heparin should not be given to the woman with unexplained recurrent miscarriages. About inherited thrombophilia, the guideline says that there is a lack of evidence to support the routine treatment for women with recurrent factor 5, prothrombin as deficiency and prothrombin gene mutation to reduce the incidence of recurrent miscarriages or second trimester loss. A decision to treat women with a recurrent miscarriage or second trimester loss can be individualized and should involve a discussion with the woman taking into consideration additional risk factors such as maternal age or the maternal risks of thrombosis or evidence of pre previous placental thrombosis. The genetic factors. Options for the couples with chromosomal ring arrangements include attempting a further natural conception, PT. SR or gamete donation. As far as the congenital uterine anomalies are concerned, resection of uterine septum should be considered for women with recurrent first or second trimester miscarriage, ideally with an appropriate audit or research context. As far as the acquired uterine anomalies are concerned, there is lack of evidence to guide the management of acquired uterine anomalies associated with recurrent miscarriages, counseling and choice of expectant versus surgical option should be individualized about endocrine factors it is written that thyroxine supplementation is not routinely recommended for you thyroid women with thyroid peroxide antibodies levels who have history of miscarriage thyroid supplementations may be considered for women with moderate subclinical hypothyroidism in which TSH is more than 4 milli international unit per liter but not routinely recommended for the woman with mild subclinical hypothyroidism in which TSH is more than 2.5 milli international per liter irrespective of thyroid peroxidase status. Regular TSH measurements from 7 to 9 weeks of gestation is recommended in case of subclinical hypothyroidism or with TPO that is thyroid peroxidase antibodies level. Progesterone supplementation should be considered in the women with recurrent miscarriages who present with bleeding in early pregnancy. For example, 400 mg micronized vaginal progesterone twice daily at the time of bleeding until 16 weeks of gestation. But the routine supplementation should be used with a caution in asymptomatic women with unexplained recurrent miscarriages. About immune factors, it is written that immunotherapy like paternal cells immunization, third party donor leukocyte trophoblastic membrane and intravenous immunoglobulin is not recommended for the woman with recurrent miscarriages. About male factors, it is written that there is no evidence to recommend the treatment for male factors. Endometrial scratch. Endometrial scratch is not recommended in a woman with recurrent miscarriages. And about the management of subsequent miscarriages, it is written that provision should be made for the woman and people to receive appropriate supportive care in terms of communication with the healthcare professional, ultrasound examination and access to the services in case of subsequent miscarriages.
Next comes the psychological support. Women with unexplained recurrent miscarriages should be offered supportive care ideally in a setting of dedicated recurrent miscarriage clinic. So that was all about salient feature from this recurrent miscarriages guideline. Thank you so much. Subscribe on Ops and Gynae. Allah Hafiz.